Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you this Sylvania Street LED MK3, okay? Now, you might recall in an earlier video I actually did show you one of these, but that was the MK2, okay, which I have over there, okay? But this one here is the MK3, okay, or the third generation. So this one here is a little, it's very similar to the MK2, but it's a slightly different design, okay? And I'll show you what's different about it. But this one here is the MK3. All right. Now I've actually had this um, for a little while. I've been meaning to do a video of it, but now I've finally, um, finally gotten to doing it. <clears throat> okay. So I got this from the same place. I got the MK2. Okay, and the the road LED. Okay, but this one here is the MK3. Okay. So this one here is um, a 17 watter, which is indicated by L17. So this is the lowest wattage or the dimmest you can get on the street LED. The brightest you can get is a 33. Okay, so that my um, Street LED MK2 is actually a 22 watt, which would be the next one up. Okay, but this one here is um, the um, MK3, which is 17 watt. Okay, so this one here has the standard diffuser, but there is also an Aero screen one available as well. I'm not a big fan of the Aero ones, okay, um, but this one here is the, just the standard one. Okay, um, it has these two little, um, little uh, like, ribs here, okay. Um, it's very similar to what the Rode LED MIDI has. The Rode LED MIDI has very similar things like this. Okay, that's so there's a little bit of extra room in the chassis so you can actually stick screws in there because the chassis in this is actually a bit skinnier than the, than the MK2, okay? Another thing that um, this thing has is that the, the, the cover here on the back is only held on with one latching device, as where the MK2, it had two latching devices. So this one's only got one. Okay, another thing that's different is the about this model is that the is the part here you can see it's actually flat it's not um it's not bowed like on the mk2 okay and this one here is a lot lighter than the mk2 okay so it's not as heavy all right now this thing here when i got this this was actually brand new it's never used okay so new old stock so brand new light so i'm just glad that i got this brand new and i also am glad i got it for free because these are not cheap okay because these lights are not cheap okay so Okay, they're cheap to run, but they're expensive to purchase. Okay, now in here we have a, an LED panel, which is made by Samsung. Okay, so the same as the MK2, but this one here is actually a little different. What's different is that the in the middle here, you can see these here, they, there's actually no LEDs there. Okay, so there's actually no LEDs there, but they've got the, um, the bubbles, but there's actually no LEDs there. So this panel only has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen 10, 12, 14 LEDs in it, okay? <clears throat> As on the MK2 I have, it's actually got 16 LEDs. So this one has four less LEDs than what we do. Okay, that's only on the 17 watt models, okay? Some of the streetlight collectors think it's just because some of the LEDs have actually failed, but that's actually not correct. It's actually, there's actually no LEDs there whatsoever. So if I were to take that cover off, you'll see there's actually no LEDs on that, okay? So it's a slightly different panel. So the part number would probably be different when you're ordering a new one. All right. All right, now, um, this one here takes the same photo cell. It's the same twist and lock NEMA photo cell. Okay, so so this one here is the, uh, the photo cell. It's the twist and lock NEMA style, as you can see. There's the window. It's actually an elect This is actually an electronic one, not an analog one. Okay, and here we have the photo cell receptacle. The extra four bits you see there are for smart cells, okay? So you can actually stick a smart cell on here. I've also got a dummy cell, okay? This is a dummy cell. What this does is it allows the fitting to stay on all the time. So you actually have to control it manually, okay? That's what I call a dummy cell. All right, so I'll, I'll turn this around and I'll show you what's inside, okay? Oh, before I show you what's inside, this is the top, as you can see. Okay, like I said, the, t the top of the head here is actually flat. It's got these, like, ribs here. Those are the only thing you see up. You won't really see this because this will be up on a pole and you'll be looking at it from the ground. Okay, now I did... There is a bit of a chip there, but that doesn't really matter too much. Okay. Um, now, another thing is to get the diffuser open, you've actually got to open this this cover to get these undone. Okay, so that's um another another thing that you need to be aware of. Okay, so the cover also has this like um, tail here. That's so there's room for the bolts to protrude because the bolts are in here. So they put that there so there's room for the bolts. It's very similar to the Road Stars, which have the very similar tail. All right, so let's open it up. 
So you just undo this clip, okay, and then the whole thing will lift open, okay? And there's the information sticker there. It says Sylvania Street LED free, okay? This was um this was Australian manufactured, of course, both Australian designed and made, so it's a domestic, domestically made. And this thing is solid die cast. You've got a solid die cast chassis, okay, and a solid die cast um, cover, unlike the Urbans and the Roadstars, which had a, a plastic cover, and those were likely to break, okay, but this one here is stronger. Okay, so this thing is a this thing's not as it's not as heavy as the road LED, but it's um but it is pretty strong. Okay, it is quite strong. All right, <clears throat> and the hinges here are actually pretty thick as well. You also have this nice wrought white seal around here to make it watertight, so you don't get water or moisture in the in here because you don't want to get that in here. All right, so here's what's inside the MK3. Here we have our um, our driver, okay, which is actually made by Sylvania. Okay, now so on the road LEDs, they're made by um, Electrotronics, but this one's actually a Sylvania one. All right, <clears throat> this is 240 volt AC. Okay, so um, so it's a t it's a two forty volts alternated current. Okay, um, and then you have your the photo cell receptacle right here. The white, the black, and the red wires are your standard wires. These extra wires you see here, the purple, the grey, the brown, and the orange, are actually for the smart cell connection. Okay, but as you can see, they're actually not connected to anything because there's no. Uh, well, the grey ones, the grey and the purple are connected, but the orange and the brown are not. Okay. So I don't know what the orange and brown would be for, but if anyone out there knows, just leave a comment and tell me what it's for. We have our um, our terminal lock right here. We also have a um, uh, some sort of power, um, uh, well, power, I don't know what that is, some sort of power driver. I don't really know what that is, but it's something. If anyone knows, please let me know what that is. Okay, and here we have our um, the wires that go into the LED panel. And of course we have our earth wire. Okay, now terminals where our live and neutral come through. Okay. Now, this one here, they're using a red for live and a blue for neutral, so that's pretty interesting. And I can see here the wires that are coming on the output are actually quite thin, but this the output of this is supposed to be um supposed to be putting out like 20 to 55 volts of power output. Okay, so, so that's how it is. I'm um, doing it. Okay, so the part number's on there. There should be a part number on this somewhere. Yeah, the part number's there. So if this ever went bad, you can simply just order a new one. It's cheaper to replace the um, driver than what it is to replace the whole fitting. All right, because like I said, the fittings are not cheap. All right. So, and this one here is, um, this is also neutral white, but there is also a warm white version of Arbor. They don't make them in cool white. Okay, cool white is, um, is that. Okay, it would be nice if they had them in cool white, but apparently they don't. All right, so let's close this up. And we'll uh, clip that on. And now what we'll do is we'll fire this thing up. Okay. First, we've got to put the photo cell on. We'll do it with the dummy cell first, and then we'll put the standard cell on. Okay, so we've got our dummy cell on. And here we go. Okay, now this is only 17 watts, but it, that, that but that is actually pretty bright. Okay, I don't really know if it's a, it's probably not as bright as the um, as the MK2 I have, but it is pretty bright. Now, as you can see in the middle of the panel, you can see there's no light coming out here. That's because there's no LEDs there. Okay, so those bubbles you see there are just for show. Okay, they don't do anything. There's no LEDs there. All right. So this is a 17 watt. LED fitting. So this re replaces the old mercury vapor metal halide high pressure sodium fl and fluorescent fittings. Okay, so um, so this is pretty good. There is some of these. I've actually had some of these installed around my area. Okay, in place of um, old mercury vapors that weren't changed to LED back in 2016. Okay, but this one here is pretty is a pretty nice fitting. Okay, so it's good to have an MK3. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is the MK3. I will do a video of comparing this with the MK2, but this one here is just the MK3 or, or third generation. Okay, now I have an MK2, but I don't have an MK1. Okay, I don't have plan to own one of those because I heard there were problems with those. Okay, but they have since improved it back then. Okay, I've actually seen a lot of MK1s backfire compared to the MK2s and the MK3s. But yeah, that's pretty bright. Good for a for a category P um, road.
okay, minor road. All right, so now we'll uh, turn it off and we'll put the, the standard cell on and we'll see what we can do. There is, it is a nice sunny day, even though it's the middle of autumn now. Okay, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, so let's turn it on. Now, if I'm right, it should cut out. Yep, it cuts out because there's sufficient light coming through. Okay, when I cover it up, it comes on. But when I take my hand away, it should turn off. There we go. You can actually hear it clicking. I'll hold this up close so you can hear it click. Yep, that's it clicking on and off. That's basically like a light switch throwing. When you throw a, um, a light switch or something, it, it makes a click sound. So that's the bimetal switch making contact. Okay, so when it gets dark, this will switch on. Okay, and at, so at so at dawn, so at dusk, this will switch on, and when at dawn in the morning, it should switch off. Yep, like that. So it switches on and off automatically when the sun comes up and goes down. Okay, so that's how that how that functions. Now the smart cells for these are actually different. I don't really know how smart cells work, but there is some sort of system that they work on to allow the fittings to turn on at a certain time. Okay, so it also probably allows you to monitor the fitting as well from your smartphone or your tablet. I just don't really know how smart cells work, but um, I do know that in the city in Melbourne they've got the smart cells, but but not here in 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 Baronia. We have just standard cells. So so that is my street LED MK3. Hope you enjoyed, and that'll be it.